The history of Westeros is full of magic, miracles, and creatures, but what happens when faith is useless and a supposed savior leads his followers to their end? In this video we will be discussing one of the most haunting moments of Aegon Targaryen's conquest. A story so sad and tragic that many in Westeros have forgotten about it. Today we will be taking a closer look at the story of the priest king Lodos and the Krakens. Welcome. To the Three-Eyed Raven. This story begins hundreds of years before Game of Thrones, at a time when Aegon the Conqueror was trying to unify the Seven Kingdoms to fight the coming darkness. Aegon had a dream in which he saw the destruction of humanity, the arrival of this eternal night that only a Targaryen sitting on the Iron Throne could stop. Aegon was destined to become king, but he was surrounded by resistance, and the Iron Islands were no exception. This is where the protagonist of this video appears. Lodos, the Twice Drowned. Lodos was an imposing man. His beard, thick and tangled, was the color of sea moss. His eyes reflected the deep blue of the ocean, as if the waters of the drowned god flowed in his veins. He always walked barefoot like a humble pilgrim. He was a messianic figure in these islands and quickly began to acquire followers. It was a very complicated time in the Iron Islands. King Harren Hor had been burned alive at Harren Hall by the dragons of Aegon the Conqueror. In the absence of a proper leader, the islands became a cauldron of ambition and betrayal. While many fought over who would be king, the humble and religious Lodos began to recruit followers for his plan. To become king of the Seven Kingdoms, for the Drowned God was on his side. The Drowned God is a benign entity that helps people and protects them from storms and sea creatures. The priests of the Drowned God were rough men, dressed in clothes that resembled the sea and carried wooden sticks that floated on the water. They had the custom of immersing people in the sea until they stopped breathing and then bringing them back to life. They said this was like being born again, stronger and braver. When someone in the Iron Islands wanted to be king, the priests would summon something called a king's moot. All the captains would gather and choose the strongest and bravest to be their leader. It was believed that the drowned god would choose the true king who would then sit in a very special chair made of stone from the sea. The sea stone chair is the mysterious and sacred throne where the leader of the Iron Islands sits. It is not just any chair. It is made of a rare and ancient stone which seems to have come straight from the bottom of the ocean. Legends say that it was created by the first men and that it has magical powers. It is made in the shape of a kraken it's not a comfortable chair, not at all, but that's what makes it special. The ancients said that if you could sit on such a hard and uncomfortable chair, then you were strong enough to be a leader. On the other hand, it is said that this throne was created by the Deep Ones, hybrid beings between humans and fish, who once lived in Westeros and for some reason disappeared. Now Lodos needed to use the sea stone chair and other symbolic elements of his belief to be able to validate himself as the one sent by the drowned god. So, as the first great symbol of faith, he was crowned as king under the bones of the sea dragon Naga. In the book The World of Ice and Fire, we can read the following. In Old Wick, forty priests gathered under the bones of Naga to place a wooden crown on the head of one of their own, a barefoot holy man by the name of Lodos, who was said to be the living son of the drowned god. Although this fragment of the book is quite small, it reveals several interesting things about Lodos and his followers, as well as the place where he was crowned. In this mystical place, there was the most sacred place for the worshippers of the drowned god, under the gigantic and legendary bones of Naga, the sea monster defeated by the Grey King. It is believed that Naga, the sea dragon, fought against the Grey King and the Drowned God, but lost its life, and its bones became the basis of this religion. Naga's bones formed a kind of great natural hall, which had been created by the Grey King in the past. Forty of these priests, 
in their robes of seaweed and snails, had gathered for a coronation ceremony. Lodos proclaimed himself the new king, but his reign did not last long. As I mentioned at the beginning, the Iron Islands were in various civil wars, trying to determine who would be king, but this came to an end when Aegon arrived on the Iron Islands in his mighty dragon. When Aegon landed on Great Wick, where he began to destroy all the aspiring kings of the Iron Islands, little by little they all surrendered to him and handed over their swords. It was there that Lodos made the decision to summon the Krakens. If Aegon had his dragons, the Iron Islands also had their magical creatures to defend themselves. Lodos, the priest king, clung to his last hope. He turned to the bones of Naga and with a heart full of despair and faith, summoned the Krakens of the Deep to sink Aegon's fleet. It is said that he performed various rituals, waited and waited, but the mythical monsters never appeared. It is here that this story takes a macabre turn. The priests and followers of Lodos were waiting for orders. Desperate and with his faith crumbling, Lodos made a final decision. Wearing his tunic, he filled his pockets with stones and walked to the sea to ask his drowned god for advice. He was followed by thousands of blind believers in their prophet. One after another, they entered the sea, and the salt water filled their lungs. This was not only the end of Lodos, but also of thousands of followers of this false prophet. It is said that for years, the bodies of Lodos's followers were found on the shores of the Iron Islands and all over Westeros. Lodos was blinded by his faith and selfishness. He thought he was the son of a god, but in the end, his faith betrayed him. Aegon changed the history of Westeros with his dragons, and the Krakens never confronted him. However, this does not mean that these mythical creatures do not exist, because as we have talked about in other videos, there are legends that explain how the Krakens were dragon food, and how these creatures were worshipped and hunted in the Iron Islands. It is said that there is a horn capable of controlling the Krakens, and I think this is the only way to summon them. I think Lodos didn't have this horn, and that's why they didn't listen to him. But it is possible that the horn of the Krakens will be found in the future, and we can see that confrontation between dragons and these creatures of the sea. But tell me what are your thoughts about all this? Did you know the story of Lodos, the priest king who lost his life together with his followers because he refused to surrender to Aegon the Conqueror? Why do you think the Krakens didn't help him? Before I wrap up this video, I want to let you know that the videos on this channel are based on both the Game of Thrones and the House of the Dragon series, as well as the books by George Martin. If you want to learn more about this universe, I'm going to leave you our affiliate link in the description, where you can order the books or their audible version. And if you like the official t-shirts of this channel, you will also find the link to our store to order your favorite piece. Thank you for your support. And if you like this content, I invite you to become a member of this channel. Each contributor will see their name at the end of all videos. And for more videos with theories, news, and stories from the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You are on The Three-Eyed Raven.